Don't do that. So today we're gonna do something different. I have a very conflicted position right now in the market um, because of what OPEC's gonna do and because of a lot of other things that I've been thinking about and the fact that whatever OPEC decided to do actually will affect the general market for the next three months and it's very very important. So this, this format of the video is going to be a little bit different and I'm going to talk about why am I really conflicted today and why I didn't do a morning video in this morning um, because I truly, I'm not really truly not sure but like okay this is trader's dilemma here okay. Let me tell you guys what is here the trader's dilemma. So first of all, every day in the morning you will have an execution plan right? You will have an execution plan. And then what you usually do is you check, you check upon different commodity prices to know where the market is heading, right? So if you look at oil futures, it almost, it almost feel like OPEC. OPEC is gonna succumb to US pressure. So what's the story behind that? Remember Jade Money yesterday um, coming out and avoiding all of the inflation questions that the reporters are asking? It's like, oh, I'm sorry, Chair Powell. Um, I have a question about the inflation. Do you think in the a, in a, in a, in a medium run, the inflation is gonna be better? And then Chair Powell is really, really smart. He basically just said, oh, I'm not really sure what really is gonna happen, but hey, like if, if worse comes to worse, we're gonna do an interest rate hike, right? And then the fact that not a lot of people are actually focusing on what really the lesson, uh, the, the lessening or the mitigation of quantitative easing, which is basically tapering, what tapering is actually gonna do to inflation? Absolutely nothing, because um, at some level, it actually will enhance the inflation level because it doesn't really do anything in terms of like a, a very short term sort of thing. And then the US government just coincidentally decided to pressure OPEC yesterday and telling them that, hey guys, we you really need to strengthen your supply because if you don't, then inflation is going to go out of hand. And, uh, and this morning we have rumors talking about OPEC is going to increase about uh, 40k oil production every single day, right? But apparently it's not. Um, OPEC and Russia is not really succumbing to US pressure and they decided to Hey guys, like they said, they decided to stick to oil pr uh, production plan, and then you will continue to see a <clears throat> basically a. Um, it's like how do describe how, how do you describe this? So 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 when rumors coming out that it's gonna stick to the 40 uh, 40,000 k uh, and forty k oil um, increase production, that forty k barrels per day actually is not really gonna help the US economy in the short run that much. Um, they are basically just stick with whatever, whatever uh, enhancement plan they had um, in June. But the, the US is actually trying to let OPEC members to double their their oil output or raise the oil output by about 80,000 instead of 40,000. Because, because the US oil demand and supply are having a huge mismatch. And internationally speaking, China is gonna run into an oil problem by the end of December. So then this entire hype oil train is gonna continue if OPEC you know, agreed to stick to oil production. Uh, which it did. Look at this um, CNBC article. And if it does, then that means, okay, then we go into a dilemma. So, if OPEC increased by 40K, then the general economic condition, condition does not change at all. Does not change at all. Which means you will have inflation inflation increase will be a staple right will be a staple in the next few months and what you're gonna see when inflation increases interest rate interest hike is gonna be on the horizon and what else do we see oil is gonna go higher but with a lesser momentum right momentum
momentum after the end of November. Okay. So what is the dilemma here is um, what we were thinking in the morning when we were trading is, hey, like if they increased oil just a tiny bit over 40K barrels per day, that means the US S&P 500, the US market has a bigger room to run. So what we're supposed to do, we're supposed to add TQQQ, right? We're supposed to add. And according to Richard Dennis, which a lot of our positions are based upon some of his principles uh, when you're trading futures is whenever you have 15 days um, like moving up or up, like the stock is ripping, you double your position. So what Richard Dan is trying to tell us is you should, you should double your oil and TQQQ position, okay? But the problem with that is taper is gonna be facilitated late November. What does it mean by late November by the Fed? If you look at, if you look at the, the actual calendar, the effect, the effect of taper will come on the Monday of the 22nd, okay? Do you guys see the problem with that? If the effect of taper will come on a Monday of 22nd, then we will see, we will see a SPY or general market correction for about five to 7.8%. If you guys wanna know the detailed math behind it, I'll post on another new video. So what is the rational thing to do? You should start loading physical shares of SQQQ, which is literally the opposite of TQQQ. So right now, like because we're still ahead of everybody else in terms of thinking, we're thinking about timing when the market is gonna go down, which just brought us to a huge like mental dilemma today. I spent like three hours trying to think about what am I supposed to do with this market? Because if, if OPEC doesn't succumb to pressure, I'm supposed to double both my TQQ and oil, uh, and oil future contract. Because if I do that, that means before the market open, I will literally make 5% minus leverage on oil and on TQQQ if that's what's gonna happen. And, and, and if OPEC decided to, and, and if OPEC decided to basically stick to their original production plan and doesn't increase at all, then the oil is gonna even skyrocket even more. But if OPEC decided to increase by more than 40K, then the oil is gonna have a short period of correction. And then we won't buy the dip on oil, okay? So like right now, like I have like, I'm not this kind of person where I, I'm not willing to miss out on this profit. So eventually what I really did is I actually did buy TQQ call because I look at the chart and I was like, I'm pretty confident the SPY will probably have another runner up um, because they're trying to, because, because that literally, because what really happens in TQQ is this, okay? For, this, for those of you who are, who, are, who are telling me I'm a dummy or, SP, or SPY dummy, what you guys don't see is this movement and then this movement, they're literally just, a lot of people started buying put position on this day. And then what the, what the entire market are doing or the institutional investors or the people who um, who really love to FOMO on the last stage of a bull tail is they're trying to squeeze out as much profit from the short squeezing action of all of the people who are basically thinking rationally about, hey, like, okay, so if they stop buying bonds in the open market, that means the yield curve is gonna pile up. That means the entire economy is actually have a correction. So let's buy into this early, but no. Right now, the, the, the rule of the game is you should, you, you have to time it very carefully because everybody is levering their portfolio so carefully with the upside movement of SPY. If you look at how SPY is moving for the past 50 15 trading days, you will see, oh my God, the slope is so high. The most rational thing for you to do is actually contraction. But guess what? When you start contracting, most people are starting following a bunch of calls. And then we're actually reaching a point where a lot of people are buying for 70 calls. And then if you go look at Tesla, 
which we sold all of our positions and all of our options on Tesla because we really think it's very overvalued. But guess what happens? We we hop off of Tesla on the first day of short squeezing, and then right now we have a huge gamma squeezing going on on a Tesla. And then the thing is, but but what you have to think about is how big of a squeeze can Tesla actually go, right? And Tesla is a very very expensive stock to short. And what Michael Burry will do right now is they're probably gonna double down on their short position because eventually when Tesla go to 1350, the, the call volume cannot sustain its upper momentum anymore. So like right now I'm very confused about what am I supposed to do because on most of my positions, I made at least 60% on physical shares and I make over 80% on my option earnings. So what did I do today is I took the pussy route. I actually start selling my positions and start preparing for the market downturn. But by the end of the market, um, by the end of like where market is supposed to close, I started start calming to my fears and my fear of um, you know missing out. And then what I did is I decided to hop on SQQQ, uh, TQQQ again because um, according to my indicator, 170 is actually completely reachable tomorrow. So if tomorrow we see a 170, we probably will. You know be a pussy and sell it off a little bit and play it by ear a little bit by the end of the market and uh the target is 172 actually if it reaches we'll probably sell it off and just you know be happy and be safe about it a little bit and for those of you who are asking for lithium pricing well let's just the international lithium futures right now is at 29 dollars so anywhere around 30 to 34 dollars for lac is actually is actually pretty justifiable range but the problem with LAC is LAC is literally trying to rob another company of their mind by outbidding them. So then they're actually going to have a spending report by the end of this quarter. So then some investors going to react and it might have a correction. I do think the entire market is going to have a correction. Right now, it's just it's way too crazy at this point. And, and people are not even reacting to what Jay, Jay Money is trying to say in, in, a, in the FOMC meeting where basically taper is gonna happen and when taper happens, a lot of basically a lot of earnings from tech and from other industries is gonna shift back into bank stocks like JPM, which today I also buy call options. And you know, generally it should do well in the next few months because um, the steps of interest rate rate hike is probably not gonna happen until the beginning of next year. So for those of you who are really, really huge on bank stocks, it's actually good news for you guys or for us in general. Um, and we probably tomorrow morning on um, when I look at the oil futures, I probably is going to start um, adding more positions because it seems like OPEC is not as pussy as I am and didn't really succumb to US pressure. And for those of you who watch my videos, you know that I'm a big VIX caller uh, yesterday and today. And you know, the, the VIX, if you started buying physical share of VIX at $15, I do think you're going to have a big return by the end of uh, by the end of next week, actually. But if you start buying options, it might not be a good timing to do so, depending on if market decides to crack tomorrow or not. Because a lot of people are like in their mindset where like, oh my God, everything's just going to keep going and keep going and keep going. And there's going to be half the same thing with Tesla, same thing with everything else is running on high fuel. It's going to have a very sharp correction period coming up in the next few weeks. All right, see you guys on the upside. Hopefully, hopefully you guys like this kind of videos. Sorry that I didn't upload this earlier because I'm really conflicted with my own position. Um, and I call some of my mentors and they're like, trust yourself. I'm pretty sure your instincts is right. I do think my instinct is right. Um, but it sort of like go against a lot of the teachings and stuff I learned from books and from like one of the greatest traders of all time, one of the greatest future traders of all time, Richard Dennis. Um, so, Eventually, I, what I decided to do is I decided to follow his principle and sort of hatch my position a little bit with some of the shorts and sort of just ride the wave a little bit longer. And some people in Patreon is actually really mad because I posted a video about EV correction and they think, and usually, you know, my correct, my predictions are really, really accurate. Like usually it happens like within two days or three days. It didn't really happen with Tesla and everything. They're blaming me for um, inducing them to sell. But for me, like I'm okay, right? My cost basis is $300. Like I sell it for like basically almost 5x return. I'm, I'm okay with the tensions I hold. Like I do think it's gonna have a correction and you know, by analyzing their, their factory data and everything, I do think um, if they don't pivot, there's gonna be a huge downside on Tesla. So I'm okay with my decision. Um, but anyways, and also um, in the next few days, I'm gonna post 
I'm gonna post on Patreon and on YouTube some different trading ideas uh, in terms of how to really hedge your position a little bit and find you guys some sort of like a safe Black Friday stocks just for shits and giggles because for, for because a lot of you just want to you know make some quick returns in a couple of weeks and everything so it's probably not a good idea to really hop on like you know the biggest oil trade or whatever because right now it's a little bit uncertain but anyways um, if you like those kind of videos smash the like button and if you haven't sub sub already please it helped us a lot thank you so much for your time